My son was born on a cold January night. What started as a very typical labor became an emergency C-section, complete with a plummeting heart rate, his, a missed epidural, mine, and a moment when the surgeon thought he left a sponge someplace it wasn't supposed to be. We were released from the hospital four days later, and I returned home, battered postpartum, and totally freaked out. Other than a few doctor's appointments and one slightly traumatic trip with my mother to try to buy nursing bras, I didn't leave the house for a month. And my husband and I, holding on by a thread. We were co-parenting, but not connecting. Then one morning, we woke up to bright, brilliant sunshine, which is a rarity in New York in February. We bundled the baby up, placed him carefully in the stroller. You know how fragile they seem at that age? And we went for a walk. I can still feel the sun on my face and the handle of that stroller, and I can picture the hideous yellow maternity jacket I was wearing, which was still the only thing that fit. And I vividly recall looking at my husband and saying, I think we can do this. And that was the turning point. Now, that wasn't the first time that walking has saved me, nor was it the last. In college, I lost more than 30 pounds walking. On a hiking trip in British Columbia, I came up with the idea that would become our first truly successful business. And in the hundreds of hours I've spent walking with my girlfriends, we've talked about everything. And I mean everything. Politics, relationships, kids, work, business, everything. I have shaken off more stress, created more ideas, lost more weight walking than through any other habit or practice. Walking has kept me sane, fit, and healthy. Now, some of this doesn't come as a surprise, right? We've all heard that walking is really good for our bodies. But I don't know that we know and appreciate just how good. Walking has been shown to reduce our risk of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, diabetes, dementia, osteoporosis, and several types of cancer. And some of us have heard that walking is really great to combat depression and boost your mood. Walking is a fantastic antidote to a crappy day. And still some of us have heard that walking can help improve your decision making, improve your memory, and fuel your creativity. Okay, so walking is great for your mind, your body, and your mood. But there's one last piece of the puzzle, and that is this, what walking with other people can do for you. And that's where the magic happens. Earlier this year, my company undertook a study of 2,300 women, and we discovered a startling fact. 73% of us experience loneliness. Now, there are about 100 women here today. That means that 73 of you sometimes feel lonely. And a study re reported by UC Berkeley shows that one in four Americans feel like they don't have a single close friend in the world. Women are lonely. Now, maybe that's not startling. There's been a lot written recently about the loneliness epidemic, and loneliness is very, very bad for us. In fact, the Surgeon General said, and I'm going to try to quote him exactly, that loneliness and weak social connections are associated with a reduction in lifespan similar to that caused by smoking 15 cigarettes a day. But in our study, we discovered another fact, one that got us on a journey to get women up, together, and walking. And that is this. Women who regularly walk with their friends report that they're two and a half times less likely to often feel lonely. Now, why is that? Why is it that walking together is so powerful? I believe it's a function of three things, all grounded in science and in how we as human beings are built. First, we're social beings, and we are wired to crave and enjoy shared experiences. Researchers believe this comes directly from our biological need to belong. Our ancestors were a whole lot safer walking in the woods with their tribe than they were walking in the woods by themselves. And it turns out that we enjoy experiences more when we share them. A fascinating study from Yale University demonstrates this. And it's a study that's pretty simple, and it involves chocolate. And anything that involves chocolate is good with me. <laughs> so they divided the subjects into two groups and had them taste a piece of chocolate with one key difference. In the first group, people were paired up with a partner, and they tasted that chocolate at the same moment as their partner. 
while in the other group they were paired up with a partner but one person tasted the chocolate while their partner was engaged in another activity. They were reading a book of art. And what they found is that the people who tasted chocolate at the same moment as their, as their partner found that chocolate tasted better than the other people. Same chocolate, different response. Simply put, you are likely to enjoy that walk more and remember it more fondly when you share it with another person. Second, walking releases a burst of oxytocin, which is a hormone that heightens our ability to feel empathy and emotion. Research shows that oxytocin fires up our desire for kinship, makes us care about other people, and helps us connect as human beings. And yes, it's the same hormone that triggers labor and nursing, which makes sense, right? Because it's encouraging us to bond with our babies. Now this is a little bit of an aside, but I find it so interesting I have to share it with you. There is some preliminary research that shows that oxytocin affects men and women differently in the social context. While it tends to make women more collaborative, it tends to make men more competitive. So it may be that sharing a walk with your girlfriend has a greater impact on you than sharing a walk with your guy friends. And third, Tons of research show that our brains process differently while we're walking. Because part of your brain is busy putting one foot in front of the other, the rest of your brain is free to problem solve, to roam, and to think more deeply. So when you walk with your friend, you have the opportunity to process what it is that she's saying. And you can take moments of silence to really think about what it is she's sharing or think about what you want to say. Imagine how awkward it would be sitting silently in a coffee shop for 30 seconds staring at your girlfriend. Weird, right? But when you're walking together, you really can take those moments of silence. Walking also fuels our creativity, encourages our brain to think more creatively. And I believe that this is part of what causes our walking conversations to be less linear, more creative, allowing us to really follow the flow of a conversation wherever it may lead. Simply put, walking provides the perfect opportunity and environment for conversation and connection. It offers time and space free of distraction. It offers the increased pleasure that comes from sharing an experience with another person. It gives us a blast of oxytocin that encourages us to connect and it enables our brains to work at their very best. Earlier this year, I co-founded a movement called 99 Walks, and we are on a mission to get a million women walking because together we can help combat loneliness, improve women's well-being, and make the world a little bit smaller, all through the simple act of lacing up our sneakers and walking out the door together. You guys, I think we can do this. I'm Joy Shulman, and I'm on a mission to get a million women walking.